Hi guys, it's Mizuki Arts. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be drawing obscure fairy tales um, because some of them are pretty dark and it's getting close to Halloween and I think it would be fun to kind of explore the symbolism and meanings behind them. So the first story we're going to be exploring is called One Eyes, Two Eyes, Three Eyes and it's sort of a Cinderella story and it's mainly about a character named Two Eyes who literally has two eyes, while her other sisters, one eyes and three eyes, have numbers of eyes corresponding with their names. So basically the story goes that one eyes and three eyes hate two eyes, um, and their mother encourages them to mistreat her, and the whole reason they hate her is because she's normal looking, and of course the other two in that society would be deemed freaks, because they don't look like other people, and that's just kind of sad. What sort of brings into question the darkness of the story is we don't get a like a good look at the mother, um, but we do know that she's manipulating her daughters, she starves one of them, and the other two are literally being told to bully as a coping mechanism for the way they look. And we don't know how the mother looks, we just know that she also hates two eyes for looking normal. I thought maybe I should have drawn the mother in the drawing as well, but I decided since that was such an important mystery element of the story, I should leave it out and just let the horror of it be in the imagination. Although I couldn't help but picture her as some kind of spidery, multi-eyed creature of some sort. And I guess I should explain the rest of the story. So basically, Two Eyes is starved, right? And she is told by a stranger that she could ask her goat for food through a chant. And she used this chant to summon a table full of food. And she did this every day when she went out to the fields to take care of the goat. And when her mother found out, she killed the goat. And <laughs> I just ended up feeling really bad for the goat. But Two Eyes planted the remains of the goat, like she buried them. And in the next day, there was a big tree with golden branches and fruit hanging from it in the place that she had buried it. Since this was such an important part of the story, I ended up um, including the branches and some fruit into the illustration itself. And I even gave her, a, like, two eyes, a little wreath of the branches on her head. No Cinderella story would be complete without uh, the appearance of a prince, right? Well, it just so happened a prince walked by the tree and was absolutely dazzled by it. And he asked um, the two sisters that were present at the time, Three Eyes and One Eyes, to pick a branch for him that he might take it back to his palace. But the branches moved out of the way when they reached for them, so Two Eyes came out to help and she was able to grab one. And I guess the prince was quite impressed because he married her. Soon after going to the palace, um, Two Eyes spotted the tree in the courtyard, basically meaning that her blessing had followed her, leaving the other two sisters and the mother with nothing. Years later, the two sisters showed up at the palace doorstep begging for food, and Two Eyes decided to forgive them and accept them into the palace to live with her. Although this seems like a happy ending, and I will admit it is, considering I've labeled this a dark fairy tale, the mother never got a redemption arc, and this could imply that she was manipulating the daughters basically all throughout their life until she died. And I imagine things wouldn't be peachy right off the bat anyway, just because it's hard to undo the effects of, you know, starving someone and mistreating someone and being manipulated your whole life. So I guess it is still a dark fairy tale, it's just not the blood, guts, and gore type. Being that it's a story of abuse, um, I still find it quite haunting and I remember reading this when I was a little kid and just, I don't know, I felt like really off after reading it, like, it was so simple but it has such an important lesson about society and how our weaknesses can easily be taken advantage of in our insecurities. To be honest, I'm just really glad this particular story had a really happy ending. The next story I want to talk about is called The Robber Bridegroom, and it's a lot more gory and graphic than most fairy tales I've read, and that's saying something. 
So, The Robber Bridegroom is a story about a young girl who is a miller's daughter and is betrothed to a man she doesn't really trust. He's charming and funny, but she just doesn't like him as much as she should, seeing as she's supposed to marry him. And he keeps inviting her over to his house, but she comes up with excuses not to go until he decides to lay down ashes so she can find her way. When she finds the house, she enters it and finds a bird trapped in a cage, calling out to her to leave. But she enters further because, after all, who listens to a bird, right? And she finds an old woman hiding in the cellar. The old woman tells her she'll help her escape, but she has to hide first. Just as she hides, a bunch of men come running down the stairs carrying a young woman with them. Screams as they tie her down and force her to drink enough alcohol that an according to the book, makes her heart explode. As soon as they know she's dead, they begin violently hacking her up, spewing pieces of her everywhere, a finger with a ring on it landing just in front of the girl who is hiding. The old woman convinces the men not to run after it and to simply sit down and eat soup she had prepared earlier. I believe this is an early element of what happens in horror movies, basically where things become real for the person witnessing them, and they narrowly escape getting caught. Late into the night, the old woman and the young girl are able to escape as all of the men have fallen asleep. At the wedding, the girl presents the story as if it were a dream until she pulls the ring from her pocket and exposes the robber to be her one and only betrothed. So yeah, this story ended up being a lot darker than the other one I read and perhaps is the darker or the darkest out of all of the ones I drew for this video. The third story is a lot more ominous than dark compared to the other ones, and it's called The Golden Key. This one is about a poor boy who goes out on a sled to collect some firewood. He is freezing cold by the time he has gathered enough to bring back, and he decides to build a fire, so he begins digging to make a little space for it to set so it's not on top of the snow. There he finds a small golden key and a box laying with it. He decides to try and open the box, and when he does, the story ends. The story implies at the very end that he has not yet quite opened it. He's so close, but we will never learn what's inside the box. The idea that no matter what, how far he gets, he can't open the box, no matter what era it is that the story is being told, he can't quite get it, is truly dark and kind of depressing to be honest, but perhaps I'm looking at it wrong and it's not quite that deep, but I don't know, I'm just, I'm looking at it like maybe what's in the box is something no human can have. Or maybe the box is something magic and it's not something anything but can be removed from, but things can eternally enter into. Sort of like a portal or like it's haunted. I don't know, this is less deep than my other theory, guys. And of course, a less dark theory is that what is in the box is different for every every individual. Like, it's supposed to represent your dreams and finding out your purpose in life. Which is, you know, a lot more wholesome and, and life-loving than my theories. <laughs> but hey, we kind of have to go over the dark theories because this is supposed to be a Halloween-type video and I might have time to uh, get another video out, you know, before, before Halloween, but who knows? Who knows? Probably not. One last theory I wanted to explore was that the boy actually never got to open the box because it was a dream and he was dying from hypothermia out in the snow. Um, basically, it, they took the time to mention that he was poor and that he was freezing cold. So this could imply that he's not wearing good clothes and of course that can lead to, you know, falling asleep in the snow because you're just, you know, getting hypothermia and all that, all that not fun stuff. To be honest, that might be the most morbid of all the theories I've come up with for this particular story. Uh, the other two sort of stood for themselves as to why they could be perceived as dark. But this one just kind of haunted me when I was young. Like, I just, I read it and I was like, why does it end like that? That's so strange. Wouldn't they, wouldn't they usually say there's like riches or something that would solve all of his problems inside the box? But they didn't, so. 
If you guys want me to do another one of these videos, I'd totally be down for it. There's so many wonderful fairy tales out there to explore. I have over 300, I think, in uh, my book that I use for this. <laughs> so if you're down for that, I'm down too. Thank you guys so much for watching. Your support means the world to me. So be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And let me know what your favorite fairy tale is down below.